Hi everyone, I'm Alessandro, welcome back to Mr. Rizal Art and today we're gonna draw a character in a weird way, the same thing that I did to Yoda last time, you can check it out on the link, I don't know where the link is gonna be. Uh, and the thing is, I chose Spongebob this time and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find some uh, Spongebob pictures uh, online, I'm gonna uh, look at them, write down uh, his main characteristics, then I'm gonna throw away the pictures, I'm gonna read what I wrote and then I'm going to uh, draw uh, this character in a weird way. So let's do this because I have the weirdness! What just... what? 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 Alright, so here we have Spongebob Squarepants. Uh, so I wrote down what are I think are his main uh, characteristics, so he's square or cube-like, he's a sponge of course, he's got big teeth, he smiles a lot, uh, he's got big eyes, he uses tacky, this kind of tacky daily uh, social clothing, which have this uh, perfect, uh, perfect fit to his body, he's got arms and legs, he's not just a sponge, he's a, a full moving character, uh, he's yellow, he works a lot, uh, making hamburgers, he's annoying and he lives in a pineapple under the sea. I don't know if I'm going to use uh, uh, this one, but it's more information about him. So now let's uh, delete these pictures and speed up the video and start drawing. Let's go! So as usual, I always start my uh, drawings and paintings uh, with a sketch. So I define the form uh, of the character and the elements of uh, his body and also uh, his gesture and every other uh, thing that I'm going to add to the, to the uh, drawing or painting. In this case, I'm going to put a spatula on his hand. So I already define all of these elements uh, in the first step, which is the sketch. In this painting I decided to go uh, for the value scale and not uh, full color directly and the reason is really simple, it's because I don't know uh, right away the colors that I'm going to use so I'll paint everything using only values and then at the end of the painting I'll use gradient maps and assign a, color, uh, a specific color to a specific uh, value of the painting. So all of the values that I'm painting, uh, I'm doing that on a uh, on a di separate layer. It's not the same layer where I drew the sketch. So the thing is, uh, after uh, the sketch is done, what I usually do is I lower uh, the sketch layer's opacity, so it becomes more uh, transparent, and then I create another layer under the sketch layer, and then I can use the sketch layer to guide me to paint all uh, uh, of the elements in this uh, value layer in the correct uh, position. These changes in values that you see me uh, apply here on his nose, his mouth, uh, his cheeks, uh, a little bit on his hands they are not there to uh, actually define form, even though they help uh, in a certain way. And they are not uh, shadows also. Uh, these changes in values, they are there because uh, I want these parts of his uh, body to have uh, some variation in color. I want his nose, his lips to be a little bit more uh, uh, red than the rest of his body, in this case uh, his uh, gigantic head. One mistake that I made, but I just corrected uh, that, I I don't even know if I, can, if I can call that a mistake actually, but it's something that makes things more uh, difficult, uh, was I painted the, his, uh, all of his clothes 
on the same layer as his body. So I'm going to use gradient maps at the end of the painting. So what happens is if I assign a color to a specific value, uh, if the same value is on his body and also uh, on his uh, a part of his clothes, what happens is uh, they're going to have the same color. So I don't want that. So what I what I ended up doing is I selected uh, the whole area uh, where I painted his uh, uh, his clothes and I, I copy and paste it to a different layer. Once my base values are in place, I move on to the shading process. And the first step of the shading process is uh, to define where light does not hit your uh, character or your subject directly. So I paint those areas in a different value. When I'm shading sometimes I, I don't need uh, to see uh, the base values. So the thing is I turn on uh, and turn off uh, these base values uh, according to my needs. For example, uh, when you see me shading the eye, I need to know exactly where is the frontier uh, between the eye and the rest of his head. So then I turn on the base value so I can see this frontier. But after that, all of the uh, refinement of the shadows I, I, I can do that without having the base values uh, turned on. One thing that you have to keep in mind here is that the things that I'm explaining here, they are not rules actually. They are just uh, the way that I found uh, better suited to paint uh, this character. Sometimes I don't even uh, follow these uh, steps that I'm showing you here. And what I take actually into consideration when I want to uh, draw or paint something is what do I want to have as a final result? Uh, what I like to do? What I know how to do? And also where can I explore things uh, f uh, further than what I know? For example, uh, maybe in this part I can do something a little bit different and try something new, something else. So I always have those things in mind before uh, deciding exactly how I, I'm going to paint something or draw something. Now you'll just see me put some things in order, refine some uh, shadows and another thing that I want to talk about is the hand that holds the spatula. I kind of lost the idea of its form for a while, so it took me some time to find it uh, again. So you'll see me try uh, many uh, different shadows here. The main uh, focal 
uh, area of uh, SpongeBob Weird Pants here is uh, his big head, or which is almost the size of his body, actually. So I decided to keep details really simple uh, on his clothing, so it won't uh, draw too much attention there. After finishing the first part of the shadows, I start to add the uh, reflected lights and also the holes on his body, so you can better see uh, his form in space. Now it's just more and more uh, refinement and detailing on the shadows and also highlights and other things like that. Now that the values part is kinda done, it's time to use the gradient map tool and assign some color to the painting. And we are getting closer to the finished painting now. Oh hi, I, I didn't see you there, I was just finishing my uh, Spongebob digital painting, let's take a look at it. Alright, so I just finished the Spongebob Weird Pants painting and I think it it's quite good actually. Um, there are still some things that I need to uh, take care of, uh, for example you can see uh, his eyebrows, they are they are kind of red because of the gradient maps, so I think I'm gonna uh, save uh, this image and work a little bit more uh, on some details and that's it uh, for this one, I think it's done. Alright, so here's the final version of Spongebob Weird Pants and the only things that I changed uh, were the eyebrows, I put a blue uh, geometric shape on the background just to make him pop out a little bit more and some other uh, minor details so that's it okay so that's Spongebob weird pants for you I hope you guys enjoyed the video remember to leave a like to subscribe to the channel if you're not already you can check out my uh, other videos too uh, comment something down below, follow me on Instagram at mr.weasel.art and that's it for today. See you next time. Bye!